San Bonani and greetings to the world. Welcome to the very first edition of The Purple Couch. Now it's Youth Month and it's been 44 years since young people changed the course of history. This show is proudly brought to you by Love Life NGO in association with the National Department of Health and the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture. I am your host Sandy Lepakhoi but you can call me Sansa and I thank you again for taking this time and joining us today. Before we see you, they get in touch with us on all our socials. It is at Love Life NGO on all socials. And don't forget to join in on the conversation using the hashtag, hashtag the purple couch. And don't forget to click the subscribe button over there. This show is for young people. We will be tackling all things youth for young people by young people. Now, our very first segment on the show is called Word on the Street. This is where your province is fully represented. This week, I'll be interacting with Ellen. Now, Ellen is all the way from Gauteng and she took to the street to check out how young people are feeling regarding going back to school amid the coronavirus pandemic. Ellen, what's in Lapu? My name is Ellen Mapahosha, aka Ellen April, and I'd like to get into the topic by saying that what the minister has put in place is very important and necessary for young people to be more dedicated to their work than they were in the past two months. And I bet you they're doing a lot more work than they did. Let's find out from them. Don't take my word for it, eh? Said, do not take my word for it. I have a young person with me right now. Hosha literally came from school. Let's find out what she has to say. May you introduce yourself, please? Uh, hi, guys. My name is Blessy. I'm doing grade 12 at Glendale Secondary School. I just arrived back at school. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel about having to go back to school at this point in time of coronavirus? Uh, I feel bad and the space is not good enough, but we don't have any choice. And secondly, uh, at school we have received masks, sanitizers, and we are trying to do this in social distancing mm. and we have given rules every time every hour we are sanitizing and before we enter the gate um, we, we, are, we are checked mm -hmm. yes okay that's good and how do you plan on coping with the whole situation then of you know things are not the same as they were before now you, you have regulations in place at school, you can't even hide, you can't do what. How do you plan on coping with the schoolwork and the regulations? Uh, at schoolwork, I would say we are going to push very harder. And the thing that we are in now, it's really bad. So we have to obey the rules and keep distance one another, as said, yes. All right, thank you very much, Blessing, for talking to us. I have another young person with me, and they're going to tell me how they feel about this whole situation. Sir, what's your name? Oh, my name is Cabello, Senem Marobello. I live in Trust uh, I attend school at Dubuti Mahan Secondary School, which is I'm um, the president of the school, by the way. Uh -huh. yeah. That is good. So you're the matriculant too, I guess. Yeah, matriculant, yeah. Uh -huh. And you just came from school right now? Yeah, I just came from school. Okay, that's great. So tell me, how do you actually feel about going back to school during this time? It's going to open our COVID-19, you know. Yeah, how do you feel about actually, it? it's pretty abnormal because we ain't used to these things. Uh, even though the procedures, we follow them, correctly and stuff but then we still feel unsafe even though parents argue that we at the streets when we at home and stuff mm -hmm. we don't stay inside the mm -hmm. houses and stuff but then i think uh scholo is still unsafe for now than starting because starting we don't go treating people at school it's hard to do that because you got friends you got siblings and stuff so to mm -hmm. And charge someone, it's very hard. It's very hard, eh? yeah. And how do you guys like plan to cope with everything that's happening right now? The school work and so on, and also the regulations selling thing. How do you plan to cope with all of that? Actually, we could cope, but then it will require us to do a lot of work. Yeah, it will require, require us to go into extra classes and do those extra activities and stuff. But then, yeah, we could go. Yeah, to catch up on to the catch road, up, yeah. That is very nice, guys. As you heard from him, he's in 
So I got with me another young person who's gonna tell us how they feel about this whole situation. Hey there, may you please introduce yourself. Hi guys, my name is Mutabile and I'm from Orange Farm, Extension 8B. I'm in grade 10 in Mpeti Mashat. Okay, Mutabile, so you're in grade 10. That means you guys are not back at school yet, right? Yes. And do you know when you'll be back? I don't know yet. So how do you feel about others having gone back to school and you guys haven't? I feel like it's unfair that other learners are going to school while we are at home knowing nothing because we only went to school for term one mm -hmm. and so literally we don't know anything about the grade that we're supposed to we are in and especially term two right yes. and now if ever yeah at this point but you know you guys are now going back to school tomorrow how would you feel about that as a young person in grade 10? i would feel very really, uh pressured i wouldn't know what to do uh, i don't know really what are we going to do there in school but um i believe that we may be ready when times go so on that you may be ready right yeah that is very great Ms. Tavide. Thank you for being with us and thank you for giving us your opinions. Guys, there you have it. That is the word on the street. Now back to you in studio and please do not forget to comment below and tell us how you feel about this whole situation. I think you know how I feel. I feel that it is necessary for every young person to go back to school because we need to keep that thing going, right? Comment below and tell me how you feel. We out. As Moong and Apo Ellen, though I sense a lot of frustrations and excitement at the same time, the Department of Education has put the necessary measures for the safety of the students and the safety of the staff. We will always be grateful to the likes of Siti Mashinini, Hector Peterson, Seth Mazibugo, just to name a few. You and I get to enjoy the freedom of education even under the new normal. Speaking of the new normal, my colleague Ronzi, all the way from Limpopo, took to the street to see what it means to be a young person. See a sanitizer, see a condomizer, making us wiser. Ronzi, what's the word on the street? Yes, Sandile, condomizer, sanitizer, and be wiser. You see what you did there. With that said and done, my name is Wansiam, and I'd like to get into today's topic. Well, today's topic is Youth Month. What does Youth Month mean to the youth of South Africa, especially considering that we have to adjust to the new norm? Does it still bear relevance to this generation as it did in the last generation, especially considering that the youth of the world make up a huge chunk of the overall population? With that said and done, I'm going to be asking a few youth members of my community, what does Youth Month mean to them? What are your thoughts about youth? Uh, my thoughts on youth month, when I think youth month, I think the youth of 76, you know, the struggle they went through, everything they went through, so we as a youth can live our youth today, you know, um, everything they fought for so that we can be able to strive for our dreams and achieve things that we, we are achieving right now, you know. Um, the second question that I'd like to ask you is, what is your advice to young people from all over the world pertaining to youth month? Uh, my advice for young people would just be never let your age be a limiting factor. You know, always strive for your dreams. Never let nobody limit you. You know, um, yeah, that's what I would say. Just reach for the stars. You know, hopefully you fall on the flowers. What do you, is it, in your opinion, characterizes the youth of South Africa at the moment? Uh, what characterizes the youth of South Africa at the moment is courage. You know, because if you don't have courage, we've been thrown through a lot, like this pandemic we facing currently, you know, it's making a lot of people, you know, sit down and do nothing. But then if you have courage, you know what to do, you know, and you know how to kind of navigate, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, the last question I have for you is, what is your advice to young people much like yourself, um, in terms of what they need to be doing to feel better for themselves? Um, what we should do actually is just that we, we know how to do actually, you know, social media, we know how to use social media, we know how to talk, we know how to socialize with people, we know how to connect. Connection is the, is the, the way forward, you think. And you always to, to stay positive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay positive, you know, you, stay, you sanitize, you stay clean, you condomize, you know, and keep your distance. Yeah, we'll keep the, the, the social distance and all that, you know. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Well, Sandile, that's it all the way from Limpopo. My name is Wang Ziem, signing out. Don't forget to sanitize, wash your hands, and keep social distancing. See you next time. Thank you, Ronzi, for those interesting views. 
Remember, you can join in on the conversation using our social media handles, hashtag the purple couch and at love life NGO. Within the first week of the lockdown, South African police services reported 2,320 gender-based violence cases. Muntu Omusha, we want you to know that Love Life has services for you. Send a please call me to 083-323-1023. I'll repeat the number. It's 083-323-1023. To engage with me further on this burning issue of gender-based violence, I am joined by one of South Africa's greatest actresses. Uzikona Sojaka. Thank you, ma'am, for joining us today. It's lovely <laughs> to have you on this purple couch. Thank you so much for having me on this purple couch. Now, by just hearing what I just um, said to the masses out there rega regarding those statistics that were made by the SAPS regarding the gender-based violence, what comes to your mind as uh, uh, an activist, as a person who's vocal about the rights of women in our country? Look, the number is shockingly high. Mm -hmm. The number would have been shockingly high if it was two, if it was four, and that is in the thousands. And you said in a week, right? Yeah, it's there was like two thousand or something in just a week. So obviously it's quadrupled now that it's been three months. So it's it's appalling to know that this is what's happening when people are bored. They're just sitting at home beating on women or children. It's just I can't fathom. I, I, like I can't any understand. But like, are you bored mm -hmm. that like you're taking it out on the person that you live with? If you and also people who beat up. Like people who can't fight back are shocking. Like can't you, like I swear there's a guy you can beat on. If you're a man and mm -hmm. you want to beat on someone, you can find another man. Who actually beats on other men? Who beats on yeah, also and, and then you can so it's 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 the the nice the nice thing about this time of lockdown is that things are coming out. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. number of 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 victims was always high even before the lockdown. But now that the lockdown is here, now we know for a fact. Now that now everything is coming out because people aren't on the streets. All we have is facts and news and facts and news. So it's nice that this this lockdown has come has has happened because things are now coming out. And would you think is is it because of the of the lockdown pressure or the lockdown frustrations that come at most uh, of our men out there? Jobs being cut, being being cut out, and a whole lot of opportunities being being put on hold. Would you say that that also adds to the number of the number increasing? Yes. Good question. I like it. Um, it's frustrating that people now are making money mm -hmm. because, like, once kupelum sevens, it means that our holy. And once on a holy, it means that you can't take care of yourself and this very family that you live with, which is really frustrating. And I think you and I can both agree that it's frustrating to not make an income. But there is no excuse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, I, like, I think mm -hmm. whether it's your woman, whether it's your man, whether it's the children or whether it's the elderly, anyone who cannot fight back, don't fight them. It's still totally... It's, it's still wrong. But... I understand that it's frustrating to not make an income and, mm -hmm. and we must acknowledge that it's a frustrating time. It's a completely frustrating time to not be making a living, but it's also a great time mm -hmm. to then make another plan instead of being so frustrated that you're now beating up people who can't fight back. Because of these frustrations of yours. No, 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 no. no I no, hear you. No, no, no. And and mem like there's there's certain number of gender based um, violence cases which go not reported because sometimes the perpetrator might be the the breadwinner in the house and the victims might find it hard to report the perpetrator. So what word of advice would you then tell those victims going through that hardship? It's a catch twenty two between. Okay, let me not use word that phrase because okay. I'm stuck in that phrase. It's a double-edged sword because if I report you and you are the uncle that's giving me money, then that means that I'm going to not get the money, I'm not going to get the benefits, I'm not going to get the clothes, the hair, the, the nice life mm -hmm. because you're abusing me, mm -hmm. whether sexually or physically or what, or all the other forms or emotionally. Mm -hmm. um, but we, I think if, if I'm in a situation like that, then I need to understand that I need to choose me. And, instead of and instead of all the things that are going to kill me anyway, because you are going to kill me. I mean, and you're tolerating just something. now before lockdown, how many cases of women being killed by their lovers was there? Were there? I mean, 
it, it was ridiculous. And it started at the end of 2019, where all these women were being killed by their lovers. And the crazy part is that these lovers would then answer and say, as case it was a mistake, I didn't know. So you usually slap me, but today you slap me against a wall. I hit my head like in the film and I, oh, and I dropped it. it. Most of the time, like four out of five times, the people that end up killing their partners are people who didn't plan on it. It's your boyfriend who usually just hits you or who usually just chokes you or strange and things that they do. And extreme. you let it happen. So because I'm saying there's a crazy thing, it grows and grows and grows and gets to a point where you're not noticing that you're now slapping me 10 times instead of slapping me the one time you used to slap mm -hmm. me until I die. So I think like if, 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 if we as the victims could look at it mm -hmm. as simple as that, that like I am the one that needs to help myself and get out of the situation because this guy is so busy being mad at or bullying at me because he can that he can't help me he can't even help himself so let me find a way to get up i think between you and i choosing between a pretty dress and life i mean i'm sure I'd, i'm sure i choose life like and this and this really really makes sense and this puts emphasis to my next question then how difficult would you think or would you say it is to like get out of a relationship that's that's very abusive as a female person. Um, <laughs> let me start here. Getting <laughs> getting out of a relationship that's bad. It's you know us girls, mm -hmm. we get stuck at love a lot. And so you're like, oh but I love him. Oh no, but he's gonna kill you. Also, or like you know a relationship is so hard to get out of even when a person's just doing something lousy, like he's cheating on you leave and then people don't leave because you're like oh but he but i can change me. him oh but he loves me obviously you your logic is little like so our logic gets overwhelmed and it gets taken over by this love mm -hmm. bag that i i just want to find and shoot mm -hmm. but i'm not fine <laughs> I just I just really really hope that most of our women get out of these situations before me too. Get out of hand. Me too. Mm -hmm. me and too. now like let me take back this to you since you are this famous most amazing actress. Oh I am? <laughs> yes you are of course. Like how is is, is there ever going to be a time whereby like you're going to use your role and like advocate for women's safety when within am our I country? Not? When am I not advocating for women to be taken care of? How am I not doing that? Every day, let me mm -hmm. tell you this for free. Every single day, every hour, every minute, every second, I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. No matter what happens, no matter what circumstance, no matter what scenario I'm in, I'm a woman. If I step into a set and there are men, I'm conscious of the fact that, oh, okay, I'm the only woman in the set. You don't take it off. You never stop being a girl. You never stop being a woman. So if that's the case, then you're conscious of the things that are limiting you as a woman okay mm -hmm. fine or oh, will they look at me funny if i if i put on my makeup in front of everyone or oh, will mm -hmm. they look at me funny? or will i be victimized oh snap i'm shooting in this room where there's nowhere to change and someone must block a corner for me to change on a set while i'm filming something so i need to be vocal about okay there's a woman that's changing here can all the men leave that's 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 a small thing but mm -hmm. that's teaching the men that are on my set that they need to respect a woman and look away every time a woman walks in, honor her and respect her. I understand the differences between the two. So if if I'm if I'm aware of those small changes that I'm that I that I that I take on mm -hmm. every single day and every single opportunity that I have, then it becomes easier for me to sit down here with you on the purple couch and say and say and advocate on even bigger, on an even bigger platform. But the, big, the bigger the platform, the more responsibility, yes. But I think if we are even clear about being, of, of being advocates, even on a smaller platform, like even in your house, even in your car, even at work, even when you're talking to a nation or an international platform, do the same thing that you do on an international platform, do it in your private space. What do you do to make sure you protect women? Because that's, that's the other big topic is that mm -hmm. while the women are being victimized, what, what are the victims mean? doing? Mm -hmm. Stephen Gacy once put up a post and he was, which was this woman who was holding out a, 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 
placard. placard things, mm-hmm. How come every woman knows a victim but no man knows, knows a perpetrator? It's, it's a very, it's a very. Do you know what I mean? Movie. Like, there's no way five girls know someone who was beat up, and no five men know someone who beat up someone. That's just crazy. Mm-hmm. And why must we be the ones that are telling men to stop beating us up when other men could beat other men who beat people? But there is certain movements whereby us brothers are trying to advocate for fellow brothers not to do, do such things. Do it more, honey. Or like, I don't care. Do more. <laughs> Most definitely. But Masekaya, I am seated with the most lovely Zikona Sojada. Now, last week, last one question to okay. you, my sister. Is there anything interesting you can tell us about your career? Oh. What is there to expect? What's next for you? Perhaps maybe taking on these platforms that you're telling mm-hmm, me to take mm-hmm. on, challenging me to take on. Perhaps, I mean, I could go on and on about the physical work, being employed, an actor for hire. Mm-hmm. I could talk about that, but I'm sure... That's something maybe you I'm sure, like, with. I'm sure we know there's more work mm-hmm. coming. Definitely, I'm still an actor for hire. Mm-hmm. Definitely. There are, there is a thing or two that I'm doing. And I'm still working on stage and in front of the small screen, mm-hmm. even now during lockdown mm-hmm. and the big screen. And uh, and, uh, and now venturing into making work, creating work mm-hmm. for the small screen. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they call that a producer. Ooh, Ooh. What a big word. So you wanna be so, behind the scenes now. <laughs> no, I mean I have the I have the opportunity of creating. Mm-hmm. So I can engage in those conversations as difficult as they are, it's mm-hmm. not easy. Just to be a startup producer in this country for so many reasons. Uh, but I am venturing into it. And I still am an actor for hire. And I am creating better platforms to have very luxuriously beautiful, necessary conversations like this. With, with both genders, with mm-hmm. men and with, me, with women about similar, similar topics. Okay, with all that being said, my sister, where can people get a hold of you? Any social media platforms you're available at? At, at Zikona Sotlaga. Yes. <laughs> yes that one. So all of them are at Zikona Sotlaga. Instagram, at Zikona Sotlaga. Twitter, at Zikona Sotlaga. Facebook, at Zikona Sotlaga. I just think that's my name, so I must use it. Like I don't Everywhere. have at Cranky Girl with the no hair. <laughs> Versus so <laughs> I thank you, I thank you again thank for you taking so your time and joining us on the Purple Couch. Thank you, sir. But people, with all that being said, I thank you again. With the lockdown restrictions slowly easing, it is still important for us to make sure we are safe at all times. We caught up with one of our sports groundbreakers to check up on how they are coping with these new normals as sporting activities are limited. Check this out. Thank you, Sandile. My name is Budim Tembu, an active lifestyle groundbreaker from Western area. I've been keeping fit uh, on my own from home, and I've been encouraging people from my community to also keep fit. Uh, as a coach, because I run a soccer team, I'm also encouraging my boys to wake up every day, do some exercise at home, and always adhere to the lockdown regulations. Because here yeah, it's a bit difficult as a sports person during this lockdown. So yeah, I've been keeping fit. And then I've been telling like people from my community to keep feed via social media because that's the only place where I can get them. So yeah, from me, Piti Pare Padi Bare Lama Bare, back to you, Sanze Studio, I'm out. The Purple Couch will be on your screens more often than you think. This is the opportunity for you to grab all the knowledge on the show and apply it. Like the former president of the United States, Barack Obama, once said, if you're walking on the right path and you're willing to keep walking, then you'll eventually make progress. I'd like to thank the amazing and talented Zikona Sotlaga for being able to join us on our very first episode on the Purple Couch. To the National Department of Health, the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture, Siabonga. Remember, the conversation continues. Hashtag the Purple Couch at Love Life NGO on all our socials. From me to you, till the next time we meet, it is a salute.